What's going on everybody, Kleepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking another look at the Blue F91 5G and going over whether or not it's still a good phone to buy in 2023. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. And in case you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the Blue F91 5G, we're getting a 6.8 inch LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 396, and an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine. So honestly, with this display, I really don't have any complaints at all. At 6.8 inches, it's definitely a really large display. So no matter what you're doing, if you're gonna be on your phone a lot, you will get a good experience here. But despite it being really large, the phone itself also has really thin bezels. So it's definitely not gonna be too bulky either. With a 20 and a half by nine aspect ratio, we're getting a taller and more narrow form factor. So if you're doing something in landscape mode, like watching a video or looking at photos, for example, you're going to get a really nice immersive experience and things are going to look a little bit more cinematic. And then when you're doing stuff like reading, browsing the web, using social media, stuff like that, with the taller and more narrow form factor, you'll be able to fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. Aside from the size and dimensions, the image quality is really good too. With the 1080p resolution, everything is going to be nice and sharp and the colors and brightness look really good too. The only thing that I guess could be a little bit better is the viewing angles because while they are okay in this kind of setting, if you're outside in the sun, for example, or just in a really bright area in general, with an LCD display like this, things might be a little bit harder to see. But honestly, that's really nothing new. And aside from that, I do think everything in this display is great. Now this phone is getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So definitely a great amount of storage for a more affordable phone like this. And for the average user, unless you're really a power user and you're constantly downloading all kinds of games and apps and stuff like that, 128 gigabytes is gonna be plenty of storage for pretty much everyone. And of course, with the micro SD card expansion, you can always offload stuff like photos and videos onto a micro SD card. And that way you can get even more storage. So at this point in 2023, Seeing that things like apps, the system, and just files in general are getting larger and larger as time goes on, it's definitely nice to see that such an affordable phone has so much storage. Now for security features, this phone does have face unlock, and it also has a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key, so definitely a great spot for a fingerprint scanner, and I do appreciate that we're getting two options besides a pin to unlock the phone. But with that being said, let's give the fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive. And again, this phone does have face unlock too. So if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, for a phone like this, the features are pretty impressive. Up front, we got a 16 megapixel front facing camera. It has a hole punch design that definitely looks really nice. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide camera, a two megapixel macro camera, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera. So in general, as far as features go, this phone has pretty much everything, including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera. So if you're taking a lot of pictures and you want a wide over of features, then this is definitely going to be a great phone for you. And as far as the actual quality goes, I do think that in general, this phone does take really good pictures. Sure, on one hand, if the camera is really your main priority and taking the best quality photos you can is really important to you, then even in this price range, or maybe for a little bit more, you can do a bit better with something like maybe the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, for example. But in general, I would say for the average user, no matter what you're using the camera for, in most situations, the Blue F91 5G will get the job done. Now, when it comes to video, this phone is actually a little above average. While only having the typical max quality of 10 p in the front camera, this phone can actually record in 2K in the rear camera. And on one hand, while I personally don't really record in 2K, and it would have been nice to see 4K on this phone, at least you can record in a slightly higher quality than 1080p, so that is definitely a nice thing. And honestly, no matter what resolution you're recording in, in my experience, the video quality on this phone for what it is is actually pretty good. So in general, if you're looking for a more affordable phone that has a really good camera, then I do think this phone is going to be a really good option. Now when it comes to RAM and processor, the Blue F91 5G is getting 8GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 810 processor. In my experience, the performance we get with this phone, while not being super amazing or anything, is definitely good for what it is. And for the average user, for more basic activities like web browsing, social media, and maybe playing a game or two, for activities like that, this phone will absolutely get the job done. And of course, as the name suggests, we are getting 5G connectivity too, which in 2023, while not being absolutely necessary yet, is definitely something you're probably going to want. Now I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone, and here are the results I got. What I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone's going to be an upgrade for you. But in general, I would say for the average user, as long as you're not doing really demanding activities or anything, the performance we're getting with the Blue F91 5G is most likely going to be at least good enough. In addition to having pretty good performance, the Blue F91 5G also has a great battery as well. With this phone, we're getting a 5000 mAh battery that supports 18 watt fast charging. So with this phone, you can expect to get really good battery life and longevity. If you're in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger, but you still have to use your phone all day, then a phone like this that has a really large battery is definitely going to be a good choice. Another cool thing about this phone that you really don't see a 
whole lot of in this price range is that with the Blue F91 5G, we actually are getting wireless charging here. Now, even at this point in 2023, wireless charging for non-flagship phones is really more or less kind of a novelty, but it definitely is a really nice feature to have. So if that is something you're looking for, definitely keep this in mind. Now, as far as the software goes, as you can see here, this phone does currently have Android 11, which is a little too bad considering that in 2023, we are going into Android 13 at this point. Now, I would expect in the future, this phone will probably get Android 12 at least, but I don't even know that for sure. So in general, if having the latest software is really important to you, then this is definitely not going to be the phone for you. But if you don't really care about the software, then keep in mind, although we do only unfortunately have Android 11 at this point, it still does run decently well in this phone, and I personally haven't had any performance issues. Now one nice thing about this phone is that it does actually have NFC, so if you like to make contactless mobile payments using Tap and Pay, then you'll be happy to know, you can do that with this phone just fine. So that's definitely a nice thing, because at this point, contactless mobile payment services are so popular and widely used, that I feel like in 2023, pretty much every phone should have NFC, even the really low-end phones. And for that matter, we're starting to see really affordable $100 phones that have NFC. So in general, in this day and age, having that feature on a smartphone is definitely more of an expectation. Now taking a look at the overall design, this phone definitely does look nice, and the build quality is pretty good too. That being said though, keep in mind, this phone is made entirely of plastic, and despite being decently durable and well-made, it really doesn't feel very premium, and the phone also doesn't have a ton of weight to it, and this may be disappointing to some people, but in general, if you're just looking for something durable and well-made, and you don't really care about the phone looking or feeling premium, then this most likely won't even matter. And again, like I said earlier, I do definitely appreciate that this phone has really thin bezels, because despite the display being really large, the phone itself is definitely not bulky at all. But in conclusion, is the Blue F91 5G still worth buying in 2023 in general, despite a couple more minor shortcomings, like the software for example, which honestly in my opinion in this price range is really kind of a minor drawback. I do think for the most part, the Blue F91 5G is still a great device that does provide a lot of value for the money. In general, if you're looking for an affordable entry-level 5G phone that has a really good display, a great camera setup with plenty of features, a good amount of storage, good performance, a great battery, and features like NFC, then I do think the Blue F91 5G is definitely worth considering. Now once again, in case you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing and some of my favorite smartphone accessories, so if you're interested, definitely check that out as well. But that's it for this video, if you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next video.